In today's video, I'm going to show you how I captured this can shot without even opening the can. What is up guys, welcome back to The Raw Factory. My name is Jacob and the goal of this channel is to help you become a better food and product photographer. So, how did I capture this can shot with the splash effect without even opening the can? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm gonna show you how I did that right now. First up, you're gonna need some pink paper. Yep, grab yourself some pink paper. I think this one's an A1 sheet just from my local office works. I have it hung on my C-stand with two clamps, but I mean, you can also maybe, if you don't have a C-stand, just hang it up on the wall with some blue tack or some tape. I'm sure that'll be fine. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to set up your lights. I'm using strobes, but you can also use speed lights. Now, the first light is pointing towards the pink backdrop. This is my key light. And the second light is pointing up to the ceiling, which is kind of gonna bounce light all around the room, creating global illuminance. This is light from everywhere, but from kind of nowhere, if that makes sense. Side note, if you guys wanna know a little bit more or have a better understanding on how to freeze motion with your speed light or strobe, I have a video which I'll leave that link below, which you can watch later on. Okay, back to the video. Before I take any shot, and I mean any shot that has pouring liquids or splashes or whatever you wanna call it, always take a test shot. My camera settings are at 1 200th of a second for my shutter speed, F10 for my aperture, and ISO 100. It's time to get pouring. I get David in the studio, chuck my camera on burst mode, get him to hold the can in position to give another test shot to ensure I am happy with the overall composition and lighting, and I think we're good to go. While my finger is on the camera button now, I start flicking the liquid from the can from the left side. I wasn't sure if this was gonna work, so I tried the right side now. And sorry guys, I am in the way, but you can kind of still see what's going on. And to be honest, I think the right side is a lot better. So luckily I did that. Now you can either flick the liquid from above or you can just pour it straight down. It's up to you, whichever one you like. Just try both, why not have both? I think personally for me in this shot, I like the pouring of the liquid from the right side. That came out really good. After going through all the images, I decided to choose this particular image and refine it in Photoshop. So, are you ready to head over to Photoshop? Let's go. First thing I always do is duplicate the layer. The patch layer is where I make all of the touch-ups. You don't want to do it on the original file because in case you want to revert back to the original, you can't. So always make a duplicate and call it patch. And the tool I will use to touch up the image is the spot healing tool. Right click anywhere on the image to increase or decrease the size of your brush. And now brush over any imperfections. Magic, right? Isn't that cool? Now, let's see if Photoshop can patch this tricky part where the liquid is over the hand. Wow, it actually did it. Amazing. Now, keep in mind, Photoshop's not always gonna be able to do all these little tricky bits and bobs, but you might as well try your luck and see how you go. Now, for the finishing touch, I wanna make the overall image a little bit more pink. And to do that, I'm gonna apply a color balance. Select the midtones and pull the slider closer to magenta until you're happy with it. And here is the final image. Not bad, right? Dang, yum. Well, that is all for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, like, comment, and subscribe to help others find this video. And I'll see you all in the next one. Remember, guys, don't wait. Make something creative today. Catches.